Craig Tomler uh, from Startup Stories. I'm here with Dave Edwards of Automed to learn about his startup journey. So, Dave, thanks for uh, meeting with me today. No worries, yep. Yeah, um, so, so your business focuses on products for, uh, well, in the agriculture industry, for animals, yes. um, really. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about what it is and how it works? Yeah, so we predominantly focus on medication trace and compliance for the livestock industry. Um, do a lot of work with the pharmaceutical industry and also do a lot of work with the intensive for livestock industry, such as pork, beef, feedlots and also now sheep. So effectively what we did was we automated the whole drug delivery process for delivering medication animals um, in such a way that it basically becomes a tamper-proof system. So effectively at the end of the day, whatever medication you give to your livestock is then fully automatically recorded through our hardware, back through our software and then obviously to a cloud solution and then it's synchronised into bigger management systems and also supply chains to ensure proper traceability and compliance. That's, that's a big step forward for agriculture, mm. I think. Yeah, a big change. And, yeah, it is. Yeah, and I was looking at, at, at your actual handheld device, yeah, yeah. and the first thing I thought was Star Trek. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> it looks just like the things they yeah, used to, yeah. you know, inject people on those. So, yeah. you know, I think it's fantastic. Yeah. Um, hopefully, at some point, it might be used for people as well. Well, it, there has been a few people ask that, and actually, yeah. yeah, they've actually come to me and said they want to do that. So, but, yeah, that's a bit of a longer journey than what I've been on so far. So, yeah. yeah. But, but let's talk about your journey, and it has already been a bit of a long journey. I think mm. you started it, um, you know, more than 10 years ago. So the original concept was, um, so the brainchild idea had come about 2006, um, between 2006 and 2008. And it was sort of one of those ideas that was kicked around a fair bit. Um, 2000, between 2006 and 2008 I came with the original concept, um, but the issue was the idea was good, the technology to produce that idea wasn't there. So I effectively had to sit on it for a while, and I did. I sort of kept dabbling with it over a number of years while still working full-time for other people. 2011 was when I actually started to do more work on the project, um, my own spare time. And 2012 was when I actually left my previous job. I actually founded, um, which is now AutoMed, and focused 100% energy over the last four years purely on developing AutoMed to what it is now. Um, since then, we have seen ups and downs with obviously um, support aspect. Uh, originally started in Newcastle, in New South Wales. We moved to Canberra um, purely because we didn't get the support we needed within the New South Wales region, yet the ACT government just loved what we were doing. Um, so we're one of the only companies to actually ever get the full 100% ICON grant. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. Um, purely hand down, they basically said, you know, this system is something they saw a lot of value in, and it wasn't, mm -hmm. it wasn't what they call a gimmick product. No. So, um, since then, we've now obviously probably invested just under probably under nearly three million into the project to date. Um, we've got a lot of major deals now happening in the pharmaceutical industry. Um, a lot going on with integration systems across Europe, America, Australia, New Zealand. Um, and between now and Christmas, we effectively nearly have up to eight of the largest pork producers in America actually using our system. Wow! Um, and we're already nearly got the top three in Australia as well. So it's. It's been one of those journeys that's had a lot of downs, and now we're starting to see the ups, but yeah, it's, it's, it's fun. It's so, fun. so, yeah, and, and you've got a US office now as well. Yeah, is that, um, that was, that's the interesting one. So we went out for the World Pork Expo. Um, the deal was during the World Pork Expo, we were going to sign off with our um, US distributor over there. So we had the whole agreement and everything done for the legal side. Got over there, met with one of the major pork producers, and he basically said, right, for you to do business as well, we need to see that you commit. And he said, we know you've got a strategy to develop a USA branch. He said, we would like to see that fast track. So we ended up um, on the spot, me and Tom Braggy, um, basically sat there and went, bugger it, you know, let's throw the distribution agreement in the bin. Let's, look, I'll, I'll look at managing. So we did a management agreement with Tom and we effectively on the spot, we dragged Tom's lawyer in halfway through the expo and ended up developing AutoMed USA. And then spent the next month sorting out things like bank accounts, insurance and the rest of it to the point We've actually now got um, really good sales in America, um, and what's happened is the sales aspects ramped up very well, but we, we're still trying to get the company structure, <laughs> company yes. structure, hundred percent correct. So it's it's been great. It's been a good journey, also a bit stressful, but yeah, it's um, ah, what else? Yeah, it's good. So 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 you've worked for other people, I presume, before this. So so what made you decide to effectively you know invent this system and, and dedicate so much time to it? Um, so I was actually an engineering director um, for a mining company, multinational. Um, did a lot of work across South Africa, Eastern Europe, China, Asia, um, a little bit in America. 
and a lot through Australia. And in that position, um, you know, I ran a, quite a large engineering team, ran a massive R&D budget. Um, and it was a fast-paced job. The problem I had with it was, with an executive position, is you do spend a lot more time playing politics than you do actually developing. So when I actually first started in that company, um, I did a lot of product development within that company. So I've been doing product development and commercialization pretty much ever since I left school. So I did a lot of work in agriculture when I first left school. Got heavily involved in the rail industry, mining industry, defense industry um, between 2000 and 2012. Um, and had some pretty high exec positions within those companies. A lot of people think I'm crazy because I actually dropped all that to actually start this. Um, and I did. I gave up a six-figure job. Mm -hmm. um, gave up the car, gave up a six-figure job, gave up, you know, the sort of that sort of luxury aspect. And it's interesting because one person explained to me the other day, it's like the golden handcuffs. You know, they pay yes. you that much that yes. you literally stay there even though you hate it. Yes. Um, so, and I did. I was. I remember it quite well. I was with my wife in South Africa. I just finished a series of meetings. A lot of politics going on in the business. We had a change of CEO, and I sat there and wrote my resignation in the corner lounge in Johannesburg. Hopped on the plane, got back to Sydney, and literally handed the keys keys over and just went left. And I was determined to go and do something that actually meant something. And this, the, the whole idea of the automated system kept bugging me that that is the thing I had to actually do. Um, my nan always said, you know, things happen for a reason, and I sort of, I think the automated project's been one of those things, which is one of those projects I sort of feel I just had to do. Mm -hmm. You know, even if I have 10 competitors come out tomorrow, at least I can turn around and say, well, I actually did it, you know, it's something I actually went through and did. What's interesting at the moment is, um, I'm probably working just as many hours as I did before, but I'm a lot happier. Yep. Um, my wife even says, I've got a two-year-old son, and my wife even says that, you know, we're working a lot. But we're happy because we're seeing at the end of the day there's something there. But it also builds values for your family as well because then, you know, even my son, you know, you build values where your son can look at that and say, well, you know, you start off from nothing to actually get to something. You know, even though I did have the position I had within those positions, you literally do have to start off with nothing. Yes. Um, and, you know, we, we put everything we had into the project. We had a lot of a lot of struggles as well. Like we, you know, last year we decided that it was important for us to go and find investors. We tried to find investment. Um, we probably met with thirty or plus potential investors. None of them, all of them, sat on the fence. Um, they didn't want to invest. Mm -hmm. And they, one of the things that constantly came up was, oh, once you get the revenue, you know, then we'll talk. <laughs> and what really, pardon the French, but what really annoyed me with that whole aspect was, you know, now now they see what we're doing and how we're moving forward, they all want to come back and get the same deal. And to be honest with you, I, I've been telling a lot of them to go and get stuffed because mm -hmm. if they couldn't believe me back then, what's, what's to say they won't believe me or back me up in the future with the next idea? And that, that's one thing that's very important for me. If my instinct tells me that they're not the right person, not the right fit, I don't, I don't want them. No. I don't want them there. So, you know, it, it's one of those things. Um, yeah had a great career in a certain industry, did very well, but dropped it all to create a business that I saw more value in. Mm. Um, and I suppose the other thing too is mining industry's dead. You know, as much, and, and there's a lot of people out there that say it's not, but let's be honest, we're getting past this stage of digging up coal. Yes. You know, um, even in Canberra. Canberra. Canberra's probably got one of the best ecosystems for new tech startups. It's got probably one of the best ecosystems for startups in general. Because I look at Canberra just with the alternative energy scheme, like we've, you know, the aim was we want to be 90%, and we pretty much are 90% plus. Yes. Um, what's also great about the Canberra aspect is Canberra just absorbed us. We haven't stopped. We've been here over two years, and literally we have not stopped in Canberra. Every week there's something like, you know, sitting here today doing this. Last week we're doing something else. The week before that we're doing something else. You know, there's this great ecosystem for companies that just, if they want to get off their ass and have a go and get motivated and get talking to people and not be scared of being rejected, you'll go far. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, and I've had a bit of a background in, in the resources industry as well. Found yeah. a couple of oil companies. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely uh, things have moved on. Yeah. Um, but some people haven't yet. No, they won't. And it is sad, like um, the new sales manager we just put on, I actually got him from the mining industry. Mm, good. Um, people thought I was crazy um, because, you know, he hasn't got any agricultural experience. Yet I now have people in our own company actually go unbelievable resource where to get him from. Yeah. Um, and he has because the mining industry also has a very strong 
you know, standards culture, very strong safety aspect, very strong corporate commercial mm -hmm. aspect. When you go into corporate based farming, because a lot of people have this position that they think farming also is, you know, you know it's all on the paddock and this sort of aspect. You get into the feedlot industry and the sheep industry, um, the pork industry and dairy industry, it is very commercial. A very big business. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's piggeries we're dealing with in America that are 175,000 South piggeries, 27 operations. They employ just over 1,200 people. Mm -hmm. You know, huge operation. And that's just not one. There's hundreds of them. Yeah. Um, China's 10 times bigger than that again. So the feedlot industry. So, you know, what was great was bringing a resource like that from one industry over to this industry they just fit the bill perfectly because they understand it's, you know, farming is like mining. You know, you've got the same amount of hours, you've got the same mm -hmm. safety aspect, you've got the same, you're, it's, agriculture is a resource industry. Yep. Um, and we're now actually looking at other people that we know within the mining industry that are looking for that sea change. Um, we've identified one already that we want to look at for the, as our operations role mm -hmm. um, because he knows how to do major operations across several different countries. Yep. Um, you try and find someone like that in the agriculture industry. It's very hard to find. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and some people think I'm crazy and some will think, but it's the crazy ones that change the world. So, um, it's those sort of ideas that I'm finding are really helping us excel as well. Um, so, you know, thinking difference is good. Dave, tell me some of the things that you've learnt on the journey so far. Yep. So, biggest one is probably networking. Um, the networking aspect, what, what I've learned is you've really got to get yourself out there and push. Even though you are a startup business, um, even though people look at you as if you mightn't have anything. Um, it's very hard also when you only have a concept and don't have a physical product. Things change when you actually have a physical product and demonstrate a product because people can see something that's tangible. So you've got, to, you've got to learn to push yourself and you've got to learn to actually learn to also pick up the phone. Um, the phone aspect is probably one that's quite interesting. Some people have a very gift, very good gift of being able to um, effectively ring people on the phone. Um, I always struggle a little bit with it, but I also, every day I would actually push myself to do it because I realised if I didn't, the business wouldn't, wouldn't, would actually fail. Um, what I also learned was you've got to go out and find people that are generally interested in what you do. So create a following to what you've also got to do because that opens up other doors. Um, one thing that worked very well for us in Canberra was going out and pushing that networking aspect because with the networking aspect in Canberra that opened up a lot of doors for us both industry wise, entrepreneurial wise, um, startup wise, even down to government grants and that aspect and we've got a lot of support out of Canberra with what we do. Um, and we are a little bit unique as well because you know we're not, we're not a mobile application like we're hitting a market that is very unique in, in what it does. So yeah. So um, so with all of that, you know, the networking's obviously helped your business along, and you're talking about your experience in the U.S. as well. Mm. Um, and you've talked a bit about what you would do differently, um, but would you do it all over again? Um, it's interesting. The value of my business changed when our son was born. Before RL was actually born, you sort of sit there and think, oh well, we can just you know do this and do that. You're a lot more relaxed because you really don't feel the responsibility you have. Um, when your son's born, you have this what I call it's like the oh shit moment. Pardon the French, but that's what it is. You literally wake up about two days after your son's born, and you're going, right, if I actually don't get this business going, I can't give my son a future. So you have this whole fear aspect. So for six months after my son was born, I was terrified um, because I realized that I needed to make this work for him and also to support my wife. Because at the end of the day, I actually had to get the business going and get, get it generating um, to support me and my wife and the rest of it. Now obviously we had a reserve for the business and that, but you sort of realise that runs out as well, so you've mm -hmm. got to keep pushing forward. It, would I do it again? Um, probably. You know, if, um, if I had to go back four years ago, I wouldn't probably do it the same way. I'd mm -hmm. probably change certain things. Um, I think having children has been a great challenge for me because it's driven me to actually achieve results. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, you know, I'd vote it. <laughs> you would definitely yeah, do it again. Would, yeah, vote yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, look, I, it sounds like you have a fantastic business with an awful lot of potential globally. Mm. Like, it really is a global business that you mm. just happen to be based in Canberra. Yep. Um, 
And look, I, I think more and more that Canberra is a fantastic place to base yeah. global yeah, businesses. Yeah, it is. Because you have a fantastic lifestyle, um, you've got decent communication and, 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 you know, transport capability. Great education schools. Yes, yes. It's good for bringing out the kids as well. Mm -hmm. um, you also have proximity to a lot of the, the, the sort of the decision makers that yep. you need to, um, particularly in agriculture as well. So a lot of those bodies down here. Um, if you weren't in Canberra, what do you think your business would be like? Um, one of the scary things was when we were in the Hunter region, Unless we're digging something up or bashing two bits of metal together, no one was interested. Mm -hmm. I really believe that if we stayed in the Hunter region, um, we wouldn't have succeeded. Mm -hmm. I think it would have been closed up probably at least 18 months ago. Um, we would have been very disgruntled because of the fact we got no support. The decision to move to Canberra effectively saved not only the business, but also the opportunity that my wife had. Is what what is sad is, you know, I spent a lot of time in a lot of other countries. Um, I spent a lot of time in a lot of different cities and throughout Australia. You don't have this ecosystem in a lot of places, like, and it, and it's an ecosystem that actually nurtures people with some really crazy ideas. Mm -hmm. Like seriously, there are some people in Canberra that have some such such whacked out ideas that actually work. That if they were in other cities or other states, they'd be told they're bloody idiots. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? So, um, I, to be honest with you, I don't think we would have survived. I don't think AutoMed would have become what it is. Um, especially the fact that ACT government was the only government body in Australia that actually supported us. You know what I mean? Like, and it's the smallest state with probably the smallest budget, and it's the one that's actually done the most for us. And, and the least agriculture as yeah, well. It's agriculture. That's true. <laughs> that's very true. Um, you know, and it's... It's sad. It's it's really sad because, you know, how many how many people are out there right now with the next big idea and they're getting nothing. Mm -hmm. Yet we see a lot of companies that quite frankly are crap. They get phenomenal amounts of money. Yes. And, you know, I, I had a graphic designer work for me once um, on the first couple of years of the automated system when I first came to camera, and he said I could put four squares on a mobile app and I could get a million bucks. And he said, that's how silly we're getting in relation to what we see value in. And he said, yeah, a person that could come up with a next generation piece of technology that would fit into a Tesla car, or that would generate alternative energy, or that would, you know, reduce water consumption, improve food quality, whatever. You know, it struggles, it absolutely yes. struggles to get anyone to even just listen. Um, yet, you come to Canberra and everyone wants to listen to the point that's a little bit overwhelming as well. And what, what was really interesting was when I first come in, I met with a group of people and I, I was so used to people not getting what I did that I went to some network function and they got it, it point blank, and I couldn't believe it. I was just sitting there going, <laughs> right, you actually understand what I do? Yeah, it's, it makes a lot of bloody sense. It's a really good idea. And yes. yeah, it's like this is, you know, what do you need? Like how can we help type thing? And I tell people outside of camera, they don't get it. They, so many people outside, we've got a great little bubble here too. There's so many people outside of Canberra that think it's all full of politicians. Mm -hmm. You know, Canberra's full of politicians and public servants. There's nothing else here. That's good on one hand because it keeps all the idiots out. Um, <laughs> but on the other hand, it's sad in a way too because I've been in other countries. Like I've been, I've been in some countries in the last six weeks where they think Sydney's our capital. Yes. You know what I mean? I've been to some places throughout New South Wales and Queensland and Victoria in the last couple of months where they can't believe that I've done it in Canberra. Yes. You know what I mean? They just, they just can't understand that. Mm -hmm. So either we're trying to protect our bubble or we're underselling ourselves. Um, but on the other hand, it's probably a good idea we are keeping all that out because by keeping it out, we're actually ensuring this ecosystem we've got stays this way. The only thing, I, the only thing we need to make sure, though, is our government keeps supporting it. If our yes. government stops supporting it, they will destroy probably one of Australia's greatest ecosystems for tech companies. I think about it, why else would Tesla come here yes. to do testing of cars? Why else would Google come and do the autonomous vehicle aspect? You know, why, why are some of the largest corporations in the world knocking on Canberra's door and not going to Sydney or Melbourne or Brisbane or wherever? It's simply because in Canberra you can get a lot more stuff done and you're not dealing with the bureaucrats. Even though everyone thinks the bureaucrats are here, 
Technically, they're not. They get on a bloody plane at six o'clock at night and piss back off to where they've been. So, you know, it's a bit like mining. It's a fly-in, fly-out job. That's yes. what the politician yes. aspect is. Yes. You know, fly in in the morning, piss off at night. Um, so, yeah, that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, look, thank you very much, uh, Dave, for your time today. That's right. Um, and, uh, look, it was a really great insight into your business. And I wish you and your wife and your son all the best Thank you. continue to grow this business. Thank you. Um, hopefully, you know, you can keep it based in, in Canberra for some time that's to come. That's the plan. That's the plan. No, but that's great. But it, it will be great to have, you know, essentially a global business based out of Canberra of your kind of calibre because mm. there is so much in the agricultural industry that needs change and, you ha and, and you're one of the change makers definitely mm. in that industry. Thank you. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. Great to be here. Great.